Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the People Show. Checking the polls, Fresh Nation brought to you by DPS Concrete Construction. Check them out at dpsconstruction.net. All right, I got a special guest, but before I bring our special guest on, if you find folks who are like me and you believe Nebraska just can just win at least at least half their their remaining games, 50% of the six remaining games, which would go three and three, which would put them at eight and four. If you're like me and you believe they can win at least half their games, smash that like button. As always, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything that we're doing here. My previous show, I had pick six previews on, the most accurate predictor of, in all of college football the last 10 years. He gave us his final record prediction for Nebraska on Tuesday. I'll give my official prediction for the Indiana game as well. Now I want to bring on our guest. This is a man who's coached college football or been in coaching for 30 plus years. He has been under three different national championship winning coaches from Tom Osborne to Urban Meyer to Ed Orgeron. Coached in two different national championship games, winning the 2019 national title with the LSU Tigers from Pender, Nebraska. And I didn't know this until I looked it up today. Played wide receiver at Nebraska. Wesleyan has had three different coaching stints at the University of Nebraska, 1990 to 1993. They won three straight Big A championships, 04 to 07. I crossed over a little bit there with Coach Bush at that time. The Huskers secondary and special teams is what he coached then, won National Defensive Backs Coach of the Year 2012. And then coached again with the Huskers in 2021 as a special teams coordinator and in 2022 special teams coordinator and defensive coordinator, Mr. Coach Bill Bush. How you doing, my friend? It's great to be on. Great to be on with you, Adam. Thanks for having me. It's always, always, a, always a pleasure to catch up with you. That's for sure. I appreciate you joining me. All right, man. I want to dive right into, it. and I want to ask you about all aspects of the Huskers. So let's start with. Let's say you're the defensive coordinator of another team, and you're getting ready to play Nebraska, one of these last six games, whether you're Indiana, USC, Ohio State, whoever. As you're watching film, and you've watched Nebraska this year, what mm-hmm. stands out to you about what they do really, really well? And what might you actually try to attack if you were a defensive coordinator, things they need to improve on, in other words? Well, obviously, the little things that stand out is, it, is the fact that they're taking care of the ball at a, a, a you know much like an alarming rate better than what they did the previous year. So, they, mm-hmm. like I said, they maintain the football, especially through the air. The, but the ball's not on the ground. It's not sloppy. So my first thing against them is that you know, they're not going to make errors. And that's one thing they've done a really good job of, of is uh, is not making critical errors and, and not having the ball turn over in those big plays. So that, that's such a uh, defeating thing for a team. So when you're watching them, uh, they cause so many problems with the multiple tight ends and different looks that they do. Uh, and then with, off of that, they have unique running game with uh, the fly sweep and the, and the inside handoff on the reverse. And then they still have their traditional run game they have. So what, what it looks like to me from if I was comparing them and watching would be that they don't really have the same quarterback run that they had last year with the quarterbacks that they had, but they have made up for that with wide receiver run games. And their wide receiver run game, if you watch it, it's almost unique by game. So it's not real easy to to to, to to figure out and to build to defend. They do it a lot from constricted formations. And so I always talk about, you know, constrict to expand. And so that's mm-hmm. kind of them a little bit. That was always in the past game. I always my philosophy in teaching defense was hey, they're constricted, but they're gonna they're that that's they're gonna be in here tight and they want to be able to get out of that. And that's kind of everybody. And so mm-hmm. you always have to have an eye on who's where and what's going on. Their perimeter blocking uh has been much improved these last few games. And that's why you've seen some of the long runs out of the wide receiver. So it would be a lot, uh, but the number one thing I would start with, Adam, would be how am I going to handle the multiple groupings and multiple formations? Because one, I, I mentioned it before uh, on the ticket was that um, Rutgers was very, very simplistic, and they were they were a eleven personnel. They they didn't cause hardly any problems with formations. Nebraska is just the opposite. They cause mm-hmm. a lot of problems, and that's what causes gap issues sometimes in defending the run game. And as most coordinators are, and I know I always was, your biggest concern is fundamental gap run defense because if you don't have that you'll just get run off the field i should mention you make a lot of great points but i should mention coach bush is on 93.7 the ticket five days a week with jake sorts and steve sippel the highest rated radio show in 15 states early break so check them out on 93.7 the ticket five days a week for two hours six to eight a.m that's an interesting point get in tight 
okay, to expand the field, essentially. And you can do a lot of crossing routes out of that. And we've seen defenders run into each other. Thomas Fedoni's fictitious PI, offensive PI call versus Purdue a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely. It creates issues in the run game. So when you look at a guy like Dylan Riola, and you're a defensive coordinator, are you? would you attack him like, oh, this is a true freshman. Let's light him up. Or is he one of those guys that's beyond his year and he might expose you if you try to do that what do you what would your thoughts be on trying to attack a guy like dylan riola right now my biggest concern with with dylan would be his calmness is that he's very calm and so mm -hmm. you'd love to see a quarterback that certain looks or certain things rattle him which means they really want this and they really want this and if they don't get that then that's going to bother him i don't see that right now whether it just be a, a max pressure a different look uh changing your looks up all those things don't seem to bother him a lot and so that would be a concern of mine you know with that i've always said in real simple that you know um abuse leads to restrictions and so if you're abusive with they we're just going to come after him we're just going to be you know pressure 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 man 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 and come after him zero pressures that will haunt you uh, he'll make you pay for that. And the coaching staff, uh, Coach Satterfield, will make you pay for that. And so you have to be able to have a, a large variety of things you can do different with those guys uh, to be able to handle that. Those formations I talked about being the ones that, were, that, are, that are constricted in man coverage, they cause a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. They really do with, like I said, with potential rub routes and things and you have to work the heck out of them. And then they also cause problems into your zone covers because then teams are good in their route running at that, that they will just spot up. They'll start to run meshes and it's not man. They just stop in the open zones and sit down. And then Dylan's really good at being able to get uh, to those uh, to those receivers during that time. So I, if, if I was playing him, I would I would be very very diversified. I'd want to be like, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to zone blitz. We're going to play this. We're going to drop eight uh, in coverage. We're also going to have a couple max pressure. So it would be more of a uh, of a buffet of a call list uh, that doesn't screw you up though. Sometimes, like I always say, you lose more games than you win. You have to be able to execute what you do also at that time. It almost sounds like you treat him like a veteran quarterback and not like a young quarterback where you want to give him so many different looks because it, it almost sounds like he'd be able to figure it out if you didn't give him a buffet or a variety of look. As Absolutely. a guy who, who is a defensive coordinator at Nebraska, your last stint there, I'm curious your thoughts on the Blackshirts. Now, they're the only defense in college football to allow less Less than 14 points a game, force more than eight turnovers, and record at least 15 sacks. They actually have 20 sacks on the year, which is first in the Big Ten. Last year, they were ranked 11th in the country. Total defense right now, they're 14th. We got six games left. Obviously, some tough opponents ahead. But I would say 95% of the time this year, okay, the, the Black Shirts have played really, really well. But what have you seen from them so far this season? And what do you think they'll do the rest of the year as the competition gets stiffer? Sure. The first thing is with stats, I always have a pretty firm thought process on that. And that's about game eight. Seven to eight is kind of when that's who you are. Sometimes you'll hear about a team game. It's, it's week two, and it's like they're the number one offense in the country. Well, yeah. they, haven't played, they haven't done anything. And also, you know, you're 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 a team like uh, like who they opened up with. You're like Florida State, or in the, in, or you're LSU, and they opened up with USC. And there's different things of who you played mm -hmm. early. So sometimes yep. you can be 48th week two, and then week six or eight, then all of a sudden you're ninth. Well, that's who you mm -hmm. are. When you get to about week eight, out of eight to nine, that's kind of who you are. And so right now they're trending, obviously really well defensively yeah. no matter how you cut it when you have not given up a rushing touchdown it doesn't matter really who you played you're through six games you've already played conference games that's outstanding that's the part that you, you look for the most um you know, if you look at the schedule, I mean, uh, the, the game with Indiana will be very interesting because they're about the same. I think Indiana's 109 and Nebraska's 108 or something in difficulty of schedule. So mm -hmm. neither one have been challenged. Uh, yeah. Indiana sure has it. Nebraska has been challenged maybe a little bit more, but that's just the, that's what the numbers say when you, when they, when they, when you pull it up. So I think that part's really interesting to see with that, but how Nebraska's playing and not giving up, not running the football. I know there was a time when there were concerns against Illinois and rushing the football. Mm -hmm. There was concerns against against northern uh iowa and that seems to have been uh, taken care of and that just makes your life so much easier and you're not in panic mode when you're trying to figure that out of how i'm going to get this run stop because off of that everything just keeps clicking but they've done mm -hmm. a tremendous job great job by coach white all right coach Special teams. Um, I'm not going to bring up any numbers. They're not great. We got to get better. Field goals to coverage units are okay. Not consistent. Obviously, the punts are always a bit interesting. We had two 60 plus yard punts our last game and two punts get blocked. Do you watch the special teams? What are your thoughts on special teams? How do they just get better at the little things? I call it the order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally from the snap to the hold to protection to then the kick on the field goal attempts just to start with. How do they get better at the little things? Well, the first thing probably would be, I would guess, I would imagine 
using it during bye week is you probably go back to square one. Mm-hmm. You almost go to camp rules. I, I would guess that. Again, I'm not an insider on that, but I would go back to doing everything and then individual work. Get back to heavy individual work with your units to go through every little phase that you have. Because we know when you look at a team right now, when you're five and one and you have a very good wide receiver group and you have a very good defensive back group and same way in athletic linebackers and, and you're deep at running back, that generally equals good special teams because those that's your core. Mm-hmm. That's the core of the guys that you're using at that time. And you have to have talent at wide receiver to cover punts, to cover kicks. You've got to get things off the offensive side of the ball. And they have that talent in that spot. So the biggest thing would be to try to get yourself back to square one and use this bye week at that time. To, to, I mean, if it were me, I would it would be a complete, they let's just press reset. Let's bury the ball. Let's move. Let's, let's go right back to not like it didn't happen but let's go back to what we have to get done evaluate mm-hmm. everything and then build a goal from that because there's one thing about for nebraska they in, in a 14 to 7 win that they had last week and have two punts block and win that game it's almost uh it, it, it would be one of the most studied games mm-hmm. uh in the history of college football because generally if you get one punt block it's 90 percent chance you lose yep and and then if you get two punts block well, that could happen if it's ohio state versus akron and akron blocks two of your punts but but you also have you know, all these NFL players running around and they just figured out a way to win the game. But in a 14 to seven game and have two punts blocked. So that credits Nebraska a lot for what they got done to get that game won. Yeah, you make some great points. And a fan actually pointed out to me because Brian Bruschini was the uh, special teams player of the week. He's like, how often does a punter have two punts blocked? And then he's the special teams player of the week. And I'm like, I did not realize that. Also, obviously, the punts being blocked aren't entirely on him. But I just thought that was an interesting point. And Bruschini had such a phenomenal game. So basically, what you're saying, get back to the little things, the basics, the fundamentals, the techniques. Absolutely. Like, it's nothing crazy, right? It's nothing crazy. It's always back to individual. How many times does your individuals work? When you did your individual all the time, Adam, through NFL and your time here at Nebraska and all the different times right there, everything had to be relatable, right? Mm-hmm. It was no good to ever be doing a drill. And all of a sudden, you were pretty smart. We're doing a drill. When do I do this? Mm-hmm. When do I do this? When is this my speed to power move? When is this move? All the things you're talking about, just playing five technique, playing all the things you had to do, playing six technique, playing nine, it had to translate, right? So that's mm-hmm. the same thing. So you always want to just go back to, hey, I need to just reset again and go back to those things to be able to get it done. I do believe when I watch the film or watch the games that I see talent running around on the field. It just I seems agree. like a minute little breakdown per that has kind of come up with that. So I would anticipate a great improvement after it from this bye week. Now, I'm going to give a Shout out to our sponsors real quick. But before I do, because we're going to look ahead at the last six games. And just so everyone knows, we are recording this before the games on Saturday are played. So as we sit here right here, right now, there's only six teams in the country with five wins. Texas, Ohio State, Oregon, Penn State, Texas A&M. All ranked, by the way, highly ranked a lot of them, and Nebraska. Obviously, we have our toughest game still yet ahead, and we're going to chat about those in a second. But before we do, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, DPS Concrete Construction. They've been with me for a long time because they do a phenomenal job. Jason Armstrong owns and operates the company. If this is your line of work, concrete, retaining walls, etc., go to dpsconstruction.net. He's a phenomenal boss. If you need this type of work done, concrete, retaining wall, etc., go to dpsconstruction.net. Also, if you're looking to have someone help you with your finances and put your mind at ease. There really is no greater stressor or few greater stressors in life than financial stresses. If you want someone who's an expert, trustworthy, and has helped my family with our finances for over a decade, it's Allen Capital Group. You can check them out at allencapgroup.com. That's A-L-L-E-N-C-A-P group.com. They have offices in Omaha, Grand Island, Ogallala. Allen Capital Group, next level solutions for next level needs. All right, Coach Bush, our next six games. We're underdogs in four of them. All right, I still believe we can win at least half of them. Now, let's start with Indiana. And as I look at it right now, we'll see how this changes. And the numbers are what they are. Okay. But there are 76, like if you look at the ESPN, there are 76% of the time they'd win this game. Three out of every four times they simulate this game. Indiana's favorite to win. They're a three and a half point favorite. And we'll learn more about them as well. Like you said, they haven't been tested. We haven't been tested. But right now, they're the number six total offense, averaging almost 48, averaging 48 points per game. And they're the number seven total defense in the country, only giving up 14 points per game. As you look at this Indiana game, I got a two-part question. What are your thoughts on Nebraska's chances to win? And how important is this game? Like if we lose, is it a ginormous deal? If we win, I feel like it's a bigger deal than it is if we lose. But what are your thoughts? No matter if you cut, it's a big game. It's an yeah. undefeated team versus a one loss team. You know, um, I think Big Noon's going to be there, right, for the mm-hmm. game. So I think yep. that that's great. I've had a chance. I, I've been, I have no problem saying this. I'm beyond intrigued with Indiana. Mm-hmm. Uh, just from, from the day that, that they hired uh, Coach Signetti and he gave me that, that I win Google 
me. I've enjoyed it. <laughs> it's been one of the best comments. I, and for some reason, I didn't even, it, I just enjoy it. And so I've kind of enjoyed following him a little bit. And he's done a tremendous job. He really has. The thing that stands out the most to me, because I guess I'm always on the other side, I'm always a defensive guy, is mm. I think the last four games, Adam, they've scored over 40 points. Yep. And again, it's not, well, they just haven't been challenged. Well, there's something to that, though. I mean, you can score in 40 points just isn't that easy when the other team has film on you. And they, mm-hmm. again, they haven't had a, a juggernaut of a of a schedule, but that stands out to me. They have a transfer quarterback from Ohio that's doing really, really well yep. for them. And uh, they've just been able to hang in there. I watched most of their game uh, against Northwestern. They were able to answer the bell. They don't panic. And so I think it's a huge game. I think the crowd's going to be crazy. I've coached at Indiana before. It's a neat place to play. I hope Nebraska fans get there because they'll really enjoy. Uh, Bloomington is a college, college town. So mm-hmm. they'll enjoy the heck out of that to be able to get. But they're, they're impressive. Uh, their numbers on defense surprised me a little bit that they were that high as far as being seventh mm-hmm. uh, because I think they have, if they have any weaknesses, it appears to me to be in the back end. Uh, they're not monsters up front, but that still, they've also played six games and they're bowl eligible. And they're in the top 10 on both sides. So that's pretty good. They had one of the most phenomenal games that I've ever seen. They beat Maryland's in the end somewhat handily. Mm-hmm. And in the first half, they had three turnovers. They turned it over three times and still were ahead at halftime. And so that that that's one of those you know, shocking. It's like, mm-hmm. wow. Yep. Uh, but I think it's going to be an incredible game. I still think that if uh, you're picking, if I just said you, you had to take one roster, I would still take Nebraska's roster. I still feel they have more. I always use the term mass kicks ass. And mm-hmm. I think that Nebraska still has more on both sides of the ball. And that usually what decides things in when it, things get really tight in the Big Ten. All right. Are you taking the Huskers then? I'm taking the Huskers. I'm taking the Huskers. That and I, I do think it will be a heck of a game. I really do. Uh, I, 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 I've been very adamant on the ticket. Uh, I am not a big noon guy. It, it's great that I don't like <laughs> 11 o'clock kicks. I want, yeah. I want, I want 2.30 or 6.30, one of those two. For games of this yeah. uh, of, of, the, of this importance, I don't like them at 11 o'clock uh, Nebraska time. It'll be very, very intriguing, and it's going to be uh, a fun game to watch. And, and uh, two coaches that mm-hmm. are new to their Big Ten schools, you know, Coach Rule's been here one more year, but it's been interesting. So I, I'm, I'm a big fan of watching uh, both these guys operate on, 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 on next Saturday. I am with you. I am not a morning person. And if it's an 11 a.m. kickoff, you know it's a 6 a.m wake-up call for players and i don't like that personally i just i like to sleep in and etc cetera, etc cetera. I, right. I didn't yeah. like i didn't like it as a coach doing it now yep. you, you have a different game plan it's 11 o'clock kick man you meet him at the elevator six o'clock and you're getting him going and mm-hmm. all those things right there but just the arrival of yep. everyone coming in for a tailgate just don't tell me that an 11 o'clock kickoff is the same as 6 30 playing colorado at mm-hmm. home it's not it's and not. so i wish it was later but it is what it is so we'll all be watching first off people are not as hydrated at 11 a.m <clears throat> hydrated yep. Coach Bush. All right, we're going to go quickly through the next two games because we're a big dog to Ohio State. We're heavily favored, 13 and a half currently over UCLA. I'll talk about those games more as we get closer, but USC is an intriguing one to me. When you look at USC specifically, except at center, they're all redshirt freshmen and sophomores on the offensive line. They only have two 300-pound guys on their entire defensive line. They're a little bit small. Miller Moss completed over 80% of his passes in their three wins and their two losses. He's completing 50%, 7% of his passes and he has three interceptions in those two games as well. I'm curious, because we're going to have a bye week before USC. USC's got some big games coming up. What are your thoughts on Nebraska-USC? Well, a couple things that come out, like I, I have down for this week, for we'll talk about tomorrow, I call it a mayhem game, which is USC versus Penn State this weekend. Because if USC loses that game, and there's a po- obviously a possibility of that, Penn State's number four in the country, mm-hmm. um, that gives them three losses. Then it's going to be how interested does USC stay? Yeah. How are they? What, what, what happens at that? Where, where, where are they at? Because the vibe of a team, we all know it changes. We all, we've all seen teams right, right now get hot. We have seen things all of a sudden. It's like, whoa, where are we at with our season? We expected this. Mm-hmm. Now we have this. Uh, they've had two tough losses. They took Michigan to the wire. Easily could have won the game. Easily could have beat uh, Minnesota, but they didn't. So now they're in a spot. Where are they, they going to be at that at that time? They've got a lot of skill, but they, they're they not giants up front, mm-hmm. which again gives Nebraska an advantage on both sides of the ball. They're bigger. They've got more girth to them. Also, veterans. I mm-hmm. talk about, I, I love old football players. I love fifth-year guys, six-year guys. I think that matters so much. So I, I have great confidence in Nebraska going to USC. Are you taking the Huskers? I would take the Huskers in that one also. There's 68 to 72 teams alive right now for mm-hmm. the playoffs. It drops about 10 teams per week till all of a sudden That's it true. gets down to the end. All right, I like it. Wisconsin, their starting quarterback got hurt. He's out for the season since the Bama game. They lost 42 to 10 then they lost 38 to 21 
them by 17 to USC in their last game. What are your thoughts on Nebraska-Wisconsin? This seems to have flipped. A lot of people like Nebraska as they start to look ahead to that matchup. I think currently, as we sit now, we're a five-point favorite. I would say the same thing. Now, there's a team that I was very intrigued with last week because all of a sudden that things were not going well. Their starting running back left the team with injuries. Uh, he's out. Quarterback's injured. All these things going on. Then they go play Purdue and they beat them 52 to 7. And Purdue's not a great team. We know that. Mm -hmm. They still went and beat them 52 to 7. So they're on the same deal. Like, did they get going? Did they get a little bit of a roll? Where's their confidence at? Because the young quarterback, guess what? Now he's played some more. Mm -hmm. And so he has some of those things going. So again, the vibe of the team has a lot to do with it. I think that game will be a three point game in my mind. I'd be shocked if it's not super close and very tight to the best. It's a 21 17, 21 18 game, somewhere in that neighborhood nature, but I would still think the advantage is, is, is still with Nebraska at that time. All right, Iowa. It depends on where you look. I've looked at some sites. We're a half point underdog. I've looked at other sites. We're one and a half point favorite. Long ways off, about six weeks, give or take. All right, what are your thoughts on Nebraska, Iowa, six weeks out? I think they, the same you know, theory I keep getting back to is where are they at? And then it's going to be where's Iowa at then? Where are their minds at? Where are they at this time uh, to be able to say that? So it's always a tough place to go. They are extremely solid on defense. And it's still, they've got them better on offense but you don't look at it and go how do we keep up and mm-hmm. so like i said in all of these games you know there's really just one game that's a tough one you look at it and that's ohio state and that's all but other than that like i said if, if you're an underdog it's by what a couple points mm-hmm. and so everything like that so I, I think the schedule really aligns well for nebraska currently when it comes to ohio state we're a 13 13 and a half point favorite over ucla but with ohio state we're a 19 point dog Okay, so with Iowa, I forgot to mention this. They have like such an easy Big Ten slate. No Oregon, no Penn State, no USC, not even Michigan. And they did play Ohio State, you know, and they lost 35 to 7. All right, so if Ohio State's the only loss you have in the back half of the schedule, that means you got Nebraska 10 and 2. Is that kind of where, what you're thinking? I had them at, like I said, I didn't look at it real close, but I had them at 9 and 3 all year. 9 and 3, okay. 9 and 3 is kind of is where I've had them uh, from, from day one. So I'm going to stick with my day one uh, uh, commitments like that. So, but someone says, well, who are you going to lose to? I don't know. Like I said, but first of all, you can't count anyone out. Not, yep. not after you just watch the, the the Vanderbilt Alabama game. And so yeah. anything anything can sure happen uh, at those times. You never know when you catch a team. Alabama scored thirty five points, and they only had the ball seventeen minutes. Mm-hmm. They couldn't they couldn't slow Alabama down, but they also couldn't get off the field. Yep. And so you never know how things operate in these games in, in a one time game uh, situation. So a lot of crazy things could happen with that. But uh, like I said, I said nine and three from the start, and I I would. I would be shocked if it was less than that. And then also very possibility of being a, a, a 10 win team too. Yeah. With that Alabama Vandy game, here's the thing. A lot of people think Vanderbilt just got lucky. No, no, no. Vanderbilt outgained them, outrushed them. As you said, had the ball 43 minutes to 17 minutes for Alabama. Alabama has issues on defense. Their problem, not ours, but in the last six quarters they played. And again, this is before October 12th. We're recording this. They've given up over 70 points. I believe it's 72 points and over 600 yards in their last six quarters on the field as a defense. So that's crazy to me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Coach Bill Bush for joining me again. Check him out early break, 6 to 8 a.m. on 93.7 The Ticket. Check them out on theticketfm.com. Of course, the thecharacterchronicles.com. It's where all your Husker sports hopes and dreams will come true. It's just science, ladies and gentlemen. Sure, I get my information. Now. When I get the need to find out any information about the Huskers, first thing I Google is is, uh, is you, Adam, and follow everything you got going on. So you do a tremendous job. And, it's, and I'll tell you this, from being in media a little I, I, I dabble in media. It's a lot of background work to do all these things and do interviews. So I appreciate you for everything you do because I know how much I just get on the radio and talk. Uh, you do all the background <laughs> information and all the, the the reads and all the different things. It's really hard. So great job by you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Also, I want to give a shout out to Mrs. Bush, Laura, the house that we're sitting in. She helped my family find our house. So if you're looking for a realtor, this is the studio, but it's part of the house. But if you're looking for a realtor, Find out, Laura, find Laura Bush. She did a phenomenal job for us. All right. I got some questions for you fine folks at home. Let me know your answers in the comments below. All right. Nebraska. I'm just going to look at the next four games. Can they win two of the next four before we get to Wisconsin and Iowa? Those games include Indiana, Ohio State, UCLA, USC. Let me know your answer in the comments below. All right. Pick six previews. Talking about Iowa, Wisconsin, my last interview had us beating both those teams. Can Nebraska beat both Iowa and Wisconsin? My last question, and I wrote it this way on purpose. My dad always said, Adam, you just got to score one more point than the opponent to win. So here's my last question. Can Nebraska score one more point than Indiana? Will they? 
to get the victory. All right, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, go Big Red. And always remember, throw the bones.